Hello, good afternoon everybody. Heading home for the day. Uh, today is February 28th, 2018. Got some uh, Royals news here to talk about. Um, you know, Eric Hos as I talked about in the last video, Eric Hosmer obviously signed with the Padres. So we went over the kind of the roster construction of what we knew. Today the Royals announced that they had agreed to a one-year contract worth three and a half million with uh, Lucas Duda. And Royals fans will remember Lucas Duda as the gentleman who threw wild uh, to home plate in Game 5 of the World Series that allowed uh, Eric Hosmer to score. A good throw would have probably got Eric Hosmer, as we all know. But you know what? He didn't make a good throw because he's not a good defensive first baseman. So um, it is what it is. Today the Royals announced they signed him. And this is an interesting move for the Royals. Uh, they had talked about a couple different options at first base, talked about Chesler Cuthbert and Hunter Dozier, Ryan O'Hearn, Frank Swindell, or whatever his last name, Swindell, Swindell, I don't know. Um, but I honestly, once they were out of the race for Hosmer, I wanted the Royals to embrace the full-on rebuilding mode, which is basically play a young player, let him play the whole season, see what it, see how it works out. The Royals have really never done that. I don't know why I thought they were going to do it this year, but um, so they signed Lucas Duda today. Look, for statistical purposes, you could slice it one. You could slice it a couple different ways. If you want to look at his uh, batting average, his batting average is not very good. He does have a lot of power. He is fairly patient at the plate. He strikes out a lot. Don't get me wrong, but uh, he does walk. Uh, I think I want to say without looking at the stats, I believe he hit 212 last year. It combined between the uh, the Mets and the and Tampa. Uh, his on base, uh, you know, for a batting average of 212, his on base was actually pretty decent compared to that. It, his on base was like 323. So his on base percentage was almost 120 points higher than his batting average, which that's pretty good. Uh, 323 is just average to write home about, but considering that his batting average is so crappy, um, you know, that's, a, that's one way to silver lining, I guess. And he slugged 496. He almost had a 500 slugging percentage. So his OPS last year... Um, was was that 818? I think it was 818. Which, hey, you know what? I'm I'm not going to complain about an OPS of 818 uh, for anybody. So that's a uh, that's a good baseball player. Now, you want to factor in his defense, which is below average. Obviously, we know that. Um, I think he's okay with the glove, uh, and I don't have a lot of data to back that up, but. Um, but I know that he is negative and wins above replacement on defense, and it almost negates what he brings to the table on offense. So he's he's a little above average for he's a, a little above a replacement level player. He's worth on the WAR stat. He's worth about one uh, when it nets out. Yeah, and anybody that knows me knows that I don't like the WAR stat. I think it's. Um, I think it's irresponsible, honestly, to uh, to compare a baseball player against a fictitious player, a player that doesn't exist, an arbitrary number that where you think that the league median should be. Um, but again, that's a discussion for another day. So the Royals have a new first baseman, and so that basically means that Ryan O'Hearn is going to get another year to develop now. The old adage in baseball is that there's no such thing as a bad one-year contract, and and I and I and I will still maintain that is that is true. There's no such thing as a bad one-year contract because it's easy to get out of. If he ends up doing really well and it has a decent batting average, but he's hitting a lot of home runs, he's getting on base by drawing some walks. Someone's going to want him for a bat for the postseason run, you know, to come off the bench or maybe be a designated hitter. Um, I, you know, it's way too early to tell who would who would want a player like that. But um, for one year, three and a half million dollar contract, he has incentives that can go up to five 
make it a little over $5 million. Still, that's a pretty safe contract for the Royals. And, and I gotta turn this off. Whew. It's that time of year, it's 60 degrees outside, but it's, it feels a little cooler than that. Um, anyway. Back to the contract status. So not a bad, not a bad contract. The Royals aren't out a whole lot if he doesn't work out. And if he does work out, and the Royals flip him for a prospect, I don't think they're going to get much for him because um, teams just aren't willing to trade prospects for, you know, for two month rentals. Unless you're the Royals and you give up six players, you know, to get Cueto and Zobrist, which again, not complaining, they won a World Series. Which, by the way, uh, one of those players they gave up for Johnny Cueto, um, Jordan Reed, I think is his name, he took the loss today as the Royals beat the Reds 3-2 to two and remain undefeated. They're now 4-0 in, in spring training. Who knows? It's funny, when teams lose and, and do poorly in spring training, they say, well, spring training, you know, it doesn't really matter. The games don't matter yet. We're just working on things. But if they do well people will tell you the exact opposite well come on you can't get excited it's just spring training it doesn't mean anything so i guess technically that's the same thing you're saying it doesn't mean anything but bottom line it's always good to do well and for nothing else it builds confidence so again not a whole lot of other information um, I haven't looked, I've, I've been in meetings all day long, so I got this notification on my phone, read a little article about it in between when we kind of had a lunch break over our, we had like a six hour meeting today, so. Um, I, I'm not a fan of the signing, honestly. And I know they, you know, I just said, there's no such thing as a bad one year contract. And from fiscally, that is true. There's no such thing as a bad one year contract. I think it's irresponsible for the Royals. Um, I don't like it. I'd rather them. I'd, I'd rather just embrace either Hunter Dozier or Ryan O'Hearn at first base. I was pretty clear in my last video that I think Ryan O'Hearn should be given the chance to um, to compete for the job, and I say he is going to compete for the job. But I, I would I would go ahead and give it to him. Now that said, I'm a fan. I'm not a baseball executive. I, I know about the sport. I know what it takes to play the sport. But again, there's things that I don't know about the team, even though I followed them pretty closely. So, I, I, I guess Lucas did it as the safe option to go with. Um, you know, in social media circles right now, people are talking about, well, how come it wasn't Logan Morrison? Why, why did Logan Morrison not get, not get a look? Look, I, I can't explain that. Uh, Logan Morrison signed with the Twins, I want to say one year, seven and a half million dollar contract. So again, fairly affordable. Logan Morrison is a kind of a, he had a 38 home runs last year. So uh, obviously a lot of, lot of power. I thought that was kind of an outlier compared to his, the rest of his career. Look, and if you want to really talk about career numbers, career OPS, Lucas Duda's career OPS is actually higher than Eric Hosmer's. <laughs> about 12 points higher. So... What does that mean? I don't really know. I think that means that OPS is, or that, well, yeah, I think that means OPS, maybe it's not all it's cracked up to be. Because I, I mean, you talk about the eye test, you talk about scouting, you, you think it's, well, Eric Hosmer is definitely a much better player, but, you know, Hosmer did have the highest ground ball rate of any first baseman in baseball last year, or two years ago. I think last year he hit more line drives, but. Again, not trying to poo-poo on Eric Hosmer. I would have wanted him back in the Royals uniform. Um, so, again, not overly excited about the move. Uh, we'll see what happens. I I think this move's going to go about as about what I expect. I think he's going to hit in the two thirties and hit probably twenty-five home runs and drive in seventy runs. And I think that Royals will call that a success. And then they'll start a new first baseman next year. I don't see him back in the Royals uniform. So I don't know. Uh, some of the moves they've just done this offseason are questionable. Uh, you know, the same deal with Alcides Escobar, signing him to a one-year contract, two and a half million. You know, I, I think that 
blocks development of Raul Mondesi, who I don't even know. How, he's going by Alberto or whatever his name is, whatever his middle name is. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm still going to call him, I'll just call him Mondesi. My, and they're now they're talking about starting him at second base and moving Whit Merrifield to center field. Again, I don't know what's going to happen with the Royals defense. This is going to be an interesting year. And with the with Fox Sports announcing that all 162 games are going to be televised this year, hey, they'll be interesting to watch for sure. Don't know if it's going to be quality baseball. Um, now, one thing I will give Dayton Moore credit for: Dayton Moore is adamant where he has, and he has been very steadfast in saying this for years. He said that every win is important, and. And I think he's taking that philosophy when signing Lucas Duda as opposed to letting Brian O'Hearn play. I think he feels more comfortable, you know, with a proven major league first baseman versus a guy that's never played there before, or Hunter Dozier, who's never played there before either. I'm not saying never played there, I'm talking about never played there in the big leagues. So again. I gotta trust Dayton. I mean, he Dayton had a plan with the the last group of prospects, and it worked out for the Royals. Maybe this will work out too in the long run. So, um, now we just gotta figure out who's gonna be in the bullpen. So that'll that'll come through as, as time goes by. So, anyway, that's all I had for today. Um, again, I, I I don't like the move, but you know I'm all, I'm gonna be cheering him on, and I'll. Cl- I, I'm not going to want him to do bad because if because if Duda does bad, that means the Royals are going to do poorly, and I want the Royals to surprise some teams. I'd I'd love it if they were competitive this year. So, a, a good positive yesterday in yesterday's game when they uh, beat the Mariners uh, 14 to nine. Uh, Jorge Soler hit two home runs. He hit one one of his second one went 488 feet, so almost hit it 500 feet. Um, the guy has un just unbelievable raw power and if he can harness that and become a, a consistent threat in the middle of the lineup maybe he's a late bloomer like Jermaine Dye was man that's going to be a tremendous bat for the Royals to have so again is one spring training game so we'll see anyway thanks everybody for watching we'll see you later